Hello! Welcome ulit sa I Math UPD channel. This is still Sir Prince and we are now in the second part out of three of our discussion on integrals. But before we start, just a reiteration of the study tips. Sana ay na-enjoy naman natin na makita ang application ng double integral sa iba't ibang bagay. And para sa pangalawang set of exercises, ang focus natin ay sa pagkuha ng surface area ng mga parametric surfaces. So we aim to answer the following questions using double integrals. So you want to determine the area of the following surfaces where the given surfaces are parametrized. So we have expression for x, for y, and for z, for x, for y, and z in terms of u and v. So recall natin paano ba yun? If we are given the parametric surface S, defined by R of u, v, what we do is take the partial derivatives with respect to u and with respect to v, then take the cross product, and then finally the norm. Kapag nagawa natin yun, yung expression na malalabas ay yung ilalagay natin sa double integral. For comparison, lagay ko na rin dito, Sa ating recall, yung case naman kung saan ang surface natin ay merong Cartesian equation na ibinigay. So, ibig sabihin nun kapag Cartesian equation, kita mo sa equation yung variable x, variable y, and variable z. And you can express z as a function of x and y. Kapag ganito yung kaso, ang gagawin lang natin ay take the square root of the sum of 1, the square of the partial derivative, of z with respect to x and the square of the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Tapos, yung square root nung sum na yun, siya yung nasa loob ng ating double integral. Okay? Ang common sa parehas, mapa parametric surface man or nakakartesian equation, ginagawa natin yung pag partial differentiate. Okay? And dagdag ko na rin sa ating recall, kapag given ka ng expression na double integral of dA over the close and bounded region D. So dito 1 lang yung nasa integrand. Equal din ito sa area ng ating domain or region of integration D. So bakit mahalaga itong recall na ito? Kasi kapag madali lang naman kuhanin yung area ng ating region of integration, kuhanin mo na lang yun para hindi mo na kailangang humanap pa ng limits of integration para sa ating double integral. Okay? So sige, proceed na tayo sa pagsagot ng exercises na ito. Again, our goal is to find the surface area of these parametric surfaces. Para sa una, we are given the parametric surface, R of u, v, equals u cosine v, u sine v, and then u. Ito yung mga components. Again, ito yung pagparametrize sa x, ito yung pagparametrize sa y, and ito yung pagparametrize sa z. Si u natin ay bounded by 0 and 2 v, pero yung v natin kasi nag run from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so gamitin na ninyo ulit ang power ng pause button to try answering this problem. Again, the goal is to find the surface area of this parametric surface over this domain. Okay? Subukan nyo ha. Pakipause. I am about to say the solution and the answer in 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, let's go. So dito, again, kailangan nating iset up yung double integral over the region of integration or the parametric domain. So dito, we have 0 to 2 pi. Ito yung sa v. And then sa u naman, we have 0 to 2 v. And then sa inner integral, with respect to u, yan kasi u equals 0 and u equals 2 v ay galing dito. So we have uh, du. And then yung outer integral naman ay with respect to v. We have du dv. Ngayon, ano nga ulit yung nasa loob? Kailangan natin yung cross product ng partial derivative with respect to u at partial derivative with respect to v. Tapos yung norm nun. So we need to find the expression that will give this. So isa-isayin natin. Sa partial derivative with respect to u, Itreat natin si v as a constant with respect to u. So ang derivative ng u cosine v with respect to u ay cosine v sa constant with respect to u. So we just get cosine v times the derivative of u with respect to u. So yun ay 1. So for the first component, we get um, cosine v. 
For the second component, si sine v ay constant with respect to u. So we get sine v times the derivative of u with respect to u. So in a1, so we get uh, sine v times 1. So in a sine v. And then sa pangatlo, the derivative of u with respect to u ay positive 1. Now for the partial derivative with respect to v, dito naman ang constant na ititreat natin ay yung mga scalar at saka yung mga u lang ang involved na expression. Kasi nga, with respect to v, yung ating pag-partial differentiate. So dito, we have u times the derivative of cosine v with respect to v. So we get u times negative sine v. Yun ay negative u sine v. For the second one, u times the derivative of sine v na lang with respect to v. So we get u cosine v. And then, para sa pangatlo, si u lang ay constant with respect to v. So ang partial derivative ng pangatlo with respect to v ay 0. Next, we get the cross product. So dito we have sine v times 0, so 0, minus 1 times u cosine v. So minus u cosine v, so we get negative u cosine v. For the second one, we get cosine v times 0, so 0, minus 1 times negative u sine v. So minus negative u sine v, so that is plus u sine v na lang. Pero kasi nasa second component tayo, so kailangan nating inigate yun to get negative u sine v. And then finally, for the third component, we have cosine v times u cosine v. So use u cosine squared v minus sine v times negative u sine v. So minus negative u sine squared v. We just get u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v. We can further simplify the third component kasi ang cosine squared v plus sine squared v ay 1 lang naman. So we can factor out u and then multiply it by cosine squared v plus sine squared v na equal nga lang sa 1. So we get the third component simplifying to u. Now we take the norm. Paano nga ba yung norm? Kailangan lang natin kuhanin yung sum ng square ng bawat components tapos kuhanin natin yung square root. So we get the square root of u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v plus u squared. So square ng mga ito. Now, again, cosine squared v plus sine squared v ay 1 lang naman. So we can factor out the u squared to get u squared times 1 plus u squared or u squared plus u squared na lang yung nasa loob ng square root. And then finally, this is square root of 2 u squared. So si u pwede mo nang ilabas. Si u naman ay non-negative dito. So, okay lang na u lang yung nasa labas natin at hindi absolute value of u. So, we have u squared of 2. Ayan na. Meron na tayong ilalagay sa ating double integral. So, we just get a double integral from 0 to 2 pi from 0 to 2 v of u square root of 2 du dv. Okay. Pwede nyo bang i-pause ulit para naman isolve ito kung hindi nyo pa na-solve kanina. Pero kung nasolve nyo naman kanina, then yay! Okay na yan. So sige, tituloy ko na in 3, 2, 1. So dito, power rule lang naman tayo for integration kasi yung sa loob, yung inner integral, with respect to u, kakaroon lang yan ng antiderivative na u squared divided by 2 times square root of 2. Tapos evaluate lang natin from 0 to 2v. So sa 2v, we get 4v squared square root of 2 over 2. Tapos, sa 0 naman, we get 0. Ayan. And then now, ito, with respect to v naman ng ating integration, again, kayang-kaya ito by power rule for integration. So we get uh, 4 over 2 i2, square root of 2. So we have 2 square root of 2. And then v cube divided by 3. Ayan. Then evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. So sa 2 pi, we get 8 pi cube. Sa 0 naman, we get 0 for this v cube. So we just have 2 square root of t, 2 square root of 2 rather, divided by 3, multiplied by 8 pi cube minus 0. So simplifying this, we get uh, 16 square root of 2 over 3 times pi cube square units. So ang ating unit ay square units kasi nga surface area. Ayan na. So this is now our final answer for item 1. Let's proceed to the second item. Ganun pa rin, find the surface area over this 
region or domain. So, sige. Gamitin na ulit ang power of the pause button para naman masubukan nyo itong sagutan. Gamitin na ang pause button. Ang sagot ay paparating na in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go! So dito, again, we need the partial derivative with respect to u and partial derivative with respect to v. Take the cross product, then the norm, tapos ipasok sa double integral. So for the partial derivative with respect to u, we get 1 plus 0, 1 minus 0, and then 3. Again, ang ating pag-differentiate this time ay with respect to u lang muna. So we get Partial derivative with respect to u to be equal to 1, negative 1, and then 3. Okay, so we have 1, 1, 3. And then, for the partial derivative naman with respect to v, we get 0 plus 1, 0 minus 1, and then ito ay 0 lang kapag dinifferentiate with respect to v. So we get 1, negative 1, uh, 0. Now, kunin natin yung cross product. So we get 1 times 0, we have 0 minus 3 times negative 1. So 0 minus negative 3, we get positive 3. Then for the second component, 1 times 0 is 0, minus 3 times 1, so we have 0 minus 3. We get negative 3, pero dahil nasa gitna, we negate it to get positive 3. And then finally, 1 times negative 1 ay negative 1, minus 1 times 1, so minus 1, we get negative 2. Then take the norm. Ito ay main norm na equal sa square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared plus the square root of negative 2. So, yun ay square root of 9 plus 9 plus 4. And so, this simplifies to square root of 22. Hence, our double integral is a double integral over the region of square root of 22 dA. Okay? So, pwede natin ilabas yung square root of 22 kasi constant lang naman. So, we get square root of 22, the double integral of dA over the region D. So dito, meron tayong expression na double integral of dA. Kaya kapag madali lang kuhanin yung area ng D, kuhanin lang natin para hindi na tayo kailangang maghanap pa ng mga limits of integration. So the question is, madali lang bang kuhanin yung area ng ating region D? So ano ba si region D natin? Triangular lamang siya. So kapag pinalat mo si 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2, 5, we get this. And our triangle is a right triangle. And alam natin kung paano kumuha ng formula. Paano kumuha ng area rather ng isang triangle. Kailangan lang natin ng alin. Kailangan natin ng base at ang height ng ating triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. Recall natin yun. So dito we just have square root of 22 times the area of the triangle. So area of D. But the area of D being the area of the triangle nga, given in this uh, graph, we get square root of 22 times 1 half times base times height. Pero ano yung base? Ito yun. Uh, we have 2 minus 0, so 2. And ano yung height? We have 5 minus 0, so 5. And then simplifying this, we get 5 times 2 i 10 divided by 2 i 5 times square root of 22. We get the area to be equal to 5 square root of 22 square units. And this is now our final answer. Ayan. So, yehey. Nagamit natin ng ating double integral sa pagkuha ng surface area kapag ang ating surface ay isang parametric surface. Mamaya, sa kasunod na part, tingnan naman natin yung kaso kung saan ang given sa ating surface ay naka-express using its Cartesian equation. Okay ba yan? So, sige. Takits sa part 3. See you!